Super Mario Kart is the game that created the kart racing genre, and it's the first entry in one of the most successful game franchises of all time, with a Mario Kart game on every major Nintendo console since, unless you count the Virtual Boy, but there probably would be a Virtual Boy Mario Kart if the system wasn't almost immediately cancelled. Super Mario Kart is the fourth best-selling Super Nintendo game of all time, with over 8.7 million copies sold. More than Star Fox and A Link to the Past combined. It sold more copies in Japan than the Dragon Quest games that people lined up to buy. And yet, before 1992, there was no Mario Kart. The game was a total surprise to everyone, even Nintendo, and they made it. There were racing games, sure. There were even ones that look like Mario Kart, and others that have a similar feel, but none of those games had the exact magical mixture of ingredients that could bring in non-gamers and have the entire family fighting for the controllers. It all started with F-Zero, the futuristic racing game that launched with the Super Nintendo. F-Zero takes advantage of sprite scaling technology, which was known as Mode 7. Mode 7 made it easy for Super Nintendo programmers to zoom in or zoom out on objects, and this effect was used frequently on the system. Games like Pilot Wings or F-Zero use the Mode 7 effect to create 3D courses, and it was pretty impressive considering how primitive the Super Nintendo is by modern standards. The game feels lightning fast and was mind-blowing back in 1991. F-Zero was an exciting game, but the developers couldn't get a two-player mode working in time for the Super Nintendo's Japanese launch, so it was single-player only. Racing against computer-controlled opponents is fine, but racing games are better with more human opponents, and legendary developer Shigeru Miyamoto knew it. He assembled a team to create a two-player F-Zero. This two-player game would be led by a two-man team. Tadashi Shugiyama was an obvious choice. He had directed Pilot Wings, so he knew how to use Mode 7. This definitely wasn't his first job at Nintendo. He had designed the characters for Ice Climber and Super Mario Bros. 2, and he was also the director of a little game called Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link. The second director was Hideki Kono, who had also worked on the American version of Super Mario Bros. 2, as well as Ice Hockey, Super Mario Bros. 3, Super Mario World, and in a bit of a left turn, Sim City. The pair realized that for the Super Nintendo to render two players at the same time, the tracks would need to be smaller. The futuristic F-Zero cars didn't make sense on the smaller tracks. The solution was go-karts. After the team had changed the cars to carts, they needed a way to make them look more distinct. Both Shugiyama and Kono had worked on Yume Kojo Doki Doki Panic, the game that was reskinned to make Super Mario Bros. 2. They decided to do the same thing with their racing game and incorporated the Super Mario characters. These characters were immediately recognizable, and including elements from the Mario series guided development of the rest of the game, from the power-ups to the locations. The music was composed by Soyo Oka, who had previously worked on SimCity and Pilot Wings. Her arrangements brilliantly set each track apart, and some, like the Donut Plains and Mario Kart GP themes, are still referenced in modern versions of the game. Super Mario Kart was obviously a massive success when it released in September of 1992. Critics gave the game high scores, and anyone that picked it up was immediately hooked. It was such a big hit that it spawned tons of imitators, some of which, like Diddy Kong Racing or Crash Team Racing, are even pretty good. This was also a big step for the expansion of the Super Mario universe. It wasn't long before the characters were appearing in all sorts of different games. They teamed up for RPGs, competed in the Olympic Games, 
and even joined other Nintendo characters in beating each other off the edge of cliffs. In modern times, players and critics still appreciate this fun first entry in the Mario Kart franchise. When IGN released their list of the top 100 Super Nintendo games of all time, they ranked Super Mario Kart at number 8. If you'd like to play Super Mario Kart on a modern platform, it is one of the games included on the SNES Classic Mini and also with the Switch's online service. Modern players that attempt this game will still have to deal with all of the challenges the SNES is notorious for. The computer-controlled opponents are extremely aggressive and will do everything they can to stop you from winning. If you finish outside of the top four, you'll have to repeat that race, and if you lose too many times, it'll be game over. But what if I told you about easy strategies you can use to quickly become a much better racer? What if I showed you tons of shortcuts you can use to get ahead? And what if I showed you powerful glitches you can exploit to skip entire laps, even on Rainbow Road? Well, on today's episode of You Can Beat Video Games, we'll learn all of that and more. If you're new to the channel, we're doing deep dives on retro video games and giving you the professional strategies that can be used by the casual gamer. Please make sure to subscribe and check out YouCanBeatVideoGames.com for episode lists, news, and official You Can Beat Video Games merchandise. Let's get started. Alright, Super Mario Kart. If you got this game secondhand and you can see that this one has 150cc already unlocked, if you'd like to erase all the data on the cartridge, hold L-A-R-Y on this screen and you can see this erase option comes up. And if you choose yes, you'll hear an explosion sound effect. And now you can see 100 is the highest class we can choose. So that's L-A-R-Y, and if you remember Larry, you'll be able to remember that code. If you're looking for an additional challenge, when you highlight your character on the character select screen, hold Y and then press A to shrink your cart. And while your cart is small, whenever you get hit, you'll still stay small, so you do not grow back to a larger size. So you'll need all of your skills to win any races with this code active. If you prefer to play on the bottom screen instead of the top, plug your controller into controller port number two, hold down L and R as you select one player, and then choose either GP or time trial, and whenever you start up the race, you'll see that you're playing on the bottom instead of the top. This doesn't really change anything other than your perspective. That's great, but here's a more useful code. If you'd like to practice the tracks in the Special Cup, but you haven't managed to unlock it yet in the Mario Kart Grand Prix, you can go to the Time Trial mode, and you'll see that right now our only options are Mushroom, Flower, and Star Cup, but if you key in this code, L-R-L-R-L-L-R-R-A, Special Cup will appear as an option, and then you can practice these tracks. So if you want to go to Ghost Valley 3, go to Ghost Valley 3. The only thing is you'll have to key in this code every time you restart the game until you unlock these tracks legitimately. This same code also works in the two-player match race mode. You'll see that the menu for match race looks exactly the same as it does for time trials, so the same code will work here. And now we can play a two-player match race on Rainbow Road. Normally, you would need to get first place on Mushroom, Flower, and Star Cup in 100cc class to be able to unlock that. If you can do a really good time trial where you don't bump into anything, you'll get a ghost that you can race against. Normally, you would lose that ghost if you turn the game off, but if you hold L, R, Y, and then press X, you'll hear a coin sound, 
and that will actually save the ghost to the memory so that when you restart a time trial and select the same track, whenever the game asks you, is this okay, yes or no, you're going to hold L and R and press X. You'll hear a coin sound and you'll be able to race against the ghost that you saved. So we saved this Yoshi ghost and we can race against it even if we turn the game off and don't come back for days, weeks, months, or maybe even years. We're going to play on a 100cc class so that we can unlock things, and it's time to pick our character. So who should we choose? There are eight different characters to pick from, but in practice, there are only four different cars. Each character on the top row has a clone directly below. The only real difference other than the look of these pairs is the way they behave when controlled by the computer AI. The slowest pair is Koopa, Troopa, and Toad. These guys have the lowest top speed, which will make it difficult to beat a good player driving a faster car. On the plus side, these guys have the best handling of all the carts in the game and the second best acceleration, making them a decent choice for beginners. Of the two, Koopa Troopa is a better pick because AI-controlled Koopa Troopa launches shells that spin out your cart while Toad wields mushrooms that only shrink your car, so you'd rather be racing against Toad. These two are the best for the battle mode. Tight controls really help in the battle arenas. Toad and Koopa Troopa are fine on 50cc, but if you want to win harder races, you'll need to be an expert with items. I recommend choosing a faster cart. Yoshi and the Princess have the best acceleration in the game, but the second slowest top speed and the worst handling. Having the best acceleration is only good if you make a lot of mistakes, and with this car's slippery steering, you'll need it. Of the two, Yoshi is a more annoying computer-controlled opponent, so he's a slightly better pick than the Princess. If you're a big fan of these characters, you can make it work, but I cannot recommend this cart. Mario and Luigi are well-rounded with the second highest top speed, good handling, but the second lowest acceleration. The brothers are both the same as computer opponents and will use Starman to become invincible. This sounds annoying, but it only works if they can get close to you, so if you can get far enough ahead, they won't pose any threat. Overall, this cart is decent, and you can do well with it, but by far the best cart in the game is the one driven by Bowser and Donkey Kong Jr. The big guys have the highest top speed. They have the worst acceleration, but if you can stay on the track, that won't be an issue. They're both extremely annoying enemy opponents, but I'd argue that Bowser's fireballs are the most obnoxious enemy attack in the entire game. If you can get good with this cart, you'll leave your opponents in the dust as you cruise to victory. If you want to be good at Super Mario Kart, you should probably be picking one of these guys. Now let's quickly talk about the items. There are eight different items you can find in the single player mode whenever you run over a question mark box. The odds of getting a specific item change depending on which track you're on, what place you're in, and what lap it is. Everyone has the exact same odds of finding items on the first lap, but after that, if you're in first place, you're more likely to get a weaker item and you'll almost never see the two most powerful items in the game, the Starman and the Lightning Bolt. On laps two through five, if you're in second, third, or fourth place, you'll have a chance at a Starman, but you'll need to be in fifth to eighth place to find the Lightning Bolt. On some tracks like Mario Circuit, you'll never find a feather, regardless of which place you're in. I'll include a table that shows your odds of finding items on each course. In this game, you can only hold one item at a time, so make sure to use what you have before you try to collect something new. Alright, let's dive into the game! So after that discussion, we're going to choose Bowser, we could choose Donkey Kong, and we will choose him for some of the other cups, but we'll start out with Bowser. 
and we're going to pick the mushroom cup race because it's the easiest. At the beginning of any race you can get a super boost, you need to press the button right after the first light lights up, and you should also listen to the sound effect so it's right after you hear that light sound effect. You need to hold down the button, and if you do it too early, you'll stall out. So you don't want to do it too early. If you do it too late, you'll just start up normally, so that's not as big of a deal. It is a tight window, so you may need to practice it a little bit to get good at it. Coins increase your top speed by about 1% for each coin that you have, up until you have 10 coins. After that, they're just extra, although if you lose coins, you don't want to dip below the 10. If you find a mushroom and you can use it, but let go of the gas, but hold down L or R, and then bump into an object, you'll do a super boost until you bump into something else. So you want to careen off of an edge or something so that you stay on the road and don't hit anything else. The thing that's hard to do about that trick is you need to take your finger off the gas and that feels very unnatural, but you can get some crazy boosts if you learn how to do it right. We managed to get first place here, and if you don't get first place in this very first race, you should probably just reset the game, because we want to get a first place finish overall, and we'll get 9 points for each first place finish, which is 3 more than the 6 you'd get for second place, 6 more than the 3 you'd get for third place, and 8 more than the 1 you get for fourth place, which is probably unacceptable, but you can advance if you get fourth place. And that brings us to Donut Plains 1. We're trying to do that accelerated start again by holding down the gas after we see that first light on the traffic signal. And you'll notice right away that the dirt roads here are very slippery and you don't want to end up in that green on the side. That'll really slow you down. Although you could get bumped there by another cart. But we are driving one of the carts that has the highest weight in the game so we should be able to throw our weight around and bump some of the other drivers. We got a mushroom here, which is one of the best power-ups we can find. That will unlock a shortcut. There are no feathers here in Donut Plains. To do the shortcut, cross the goal line, then veer to the right. Use your mushroom, but let go of the gas and hold down L or R. You need to hit the water and you'll automatically bounce over. Here it is again in slow motion. So you're going to use your mushroom, let go of the B button and hold down L or R. And if you do it just right, you'll go over the wall and that will take you almost completely around to the other side and you'll see that now we're on lap four. This is a difficult trick to do, but if you have this game on the Nintendo Switch, you can practice this trick using the rewind function, and after a while you can get pretty good at it, but it's certainly hard at first. And that brings us to the fifth and final lap. Because we did that shortcut, we're so far ahead at this point that even if we drive this lap a little bit sloppy, we should still be fine. And you can see if you have the banana item and you hold up as you press A, it will launch out in front of you instead of being dropped behind you, which is the default mode. And of course, we got another first place. Now that trick where you use the mushroom to jump over the wall is pretty sweet, but what if I told you there was a way to beat this one without driving around the course at all or using any power-ups? Angle yourself to the right at the goal line and you want to drive towards the blue cluster of four blocks. And you can see the spot that you're trying to aim at. It's over on the right side between the two blocks on the right side. So that's where you're aiming at. And you need to hit the jump button right before you hit the wall so that you elevate above it. And for just a second, you're on the other side of the track so that the game counts it as a lap. To try to get multiple laps to count, I'm just holding down the B button so that I'm continuously ramming the wall, and I'm also rapidly tapping the jump button so that I keep jumping in the air, and I'm just using left and right on the direction pad to try to reposition my cart 
so that I can aim for that one special spot. Whenever I'm close to the spot, I'm going to try to be more precise with my jumping because you do want to jump right before you hit the wall so that you can get higher and actually go over the wall. So that's the spot over there. We need to be more to the right, and there it is again. A little bit more to the right, and just try to elevate, and now we're on the final lap, okay. So we're too far right, we don't want to be in the yellow, we want to be on the right side of the blue. And there it is, we were able to complete Donut Plains without going around at all. Now any casual observer can see that Donkey Kong Jr. cheated, but if Lakitu counts the laps, those laps count. That's just how things work here in Mario Kart. With a second first place victory, we're well on our way to getting first here in the Mushroom Cup, but our next challenge is Ghost Valley 1. Finally, a race where we can get the elusive feather item. Of course, we found a green shell instead. Green shell is much more likely to be found on the first lap or if you're in first place, but oh, there's the feather that we found in a secondary treasure box. So now that we have it, what should we do with it? Well, if you do a big slide right at the goal line, cross the goal and then use the feather to go back across the goal line and land out of bounds, Lakitu will count it as a lap. So here's the replay. You can see where to start your slide. And Lakitu will count that. But that's not the only thing you can do with a feather here in Ghost Valley 1. That trick is a little bit difficult to do, so if you can get a feather here, well this is a mushroom, so this is hard to do with a mushroom, but if you use that speed boost, you can jump over to that wooden plank on the other side, and that's a decent shortcut. If you have the feather, it's a lot easier than using the mushroom, and if you're on 150cc, it's possible to make it over there without items at all, but it is very difficult to do. We were able to skip an entire lap with a feather, so once again, we're way ahead now that we're on the final lap. So we'll just take it easy, go the long way around, and cross the finish line for another first place. Now, jumping off the edge with a feather is a great way to skip laps, not only here in Ghost Valley 1, but also in a number of other tracks but there is a way that you can skip laps here without using items at all. You just want to drive right up to where the coins are and then just keep hopping using the L or R button so that you turn around and you want to drive at the outside edge of the goal line and jump over those blocks on the end so that you don't hit the blocks but you land somewhere behind the goal line and Lakitu will pick you up and carry you for an extra lap. Now you can't do the trick again until you've driven around the track at least one time, but once you drive around, you can set it up again. So we'll go in roughly the same spot, and if you mess this up, you'll probably hit those blocks and fall into the darkness on the side. But even if you do mess it up, you can just turn around and attempt it again, and just keep trying it until you get it, and if the other racers are all way ahead of you at that point, you can just pause the game and retry. And we'll use the feather, and you can see that you don't even have to be going that fast on this track to make that feather trick work. And it's pretty neat when you use it to count as the last lap. You can see the final lap only took 2.87 seconds. With our third first place finish, we are now in a commanding lead here in the 100cc Mushroom Cup. The next race is Bowser's Castle 1, and this one has a lot of hairpin turns. We'll need to use our power slide maneuver if we want to get a good time here. Once again, we're going to try to time up a fast start. And to do that power slide, you just want to jump, and whenever you land, you're going to continue to hold L or R, whichever button you jumped with, and then you're going to press the direction towards the way that you're turning. So if you're turning to the left, you're going to hold left. If you're turning to the right, you're going to hold right. Here on Bowser's Castle 1, since we're going around in a counterclockwise pattern, 
If you're doing a slide, you're probably going to be holding to the left. With the exception being this turn here in the middle that goes to the right. The rest of the turns all go left. Here, if you do a big power slide like we did in Ghost Valley 1 and then use a feather to jump from the front of the goal line into the out of bounds area behind the goal line, and here it is again in slow motion, so start your slide over on the left side and rotate it inwards to the right and use your feather to land in those bricks on the outside and you can see that Lakitu counted that as a lap and now we're on lap 4 when we should have been on lap 3. That trick isn't that hard to do, you just want to make sure that you have enough momentum to get you turned all the way around, and then use your feather to leap out of bounds. You can see now the thwomps are active. If you get stuck behind a thwomp, you can lose a lot of time, so that's pretty dangerous. And we found another feather. So I'm going to show you another thing that you can do with a feather. If you're not confident doing that skip trick, you can just try to use a feather to cut a corner. So that's what I would do with it if you don't want to try jumping out of bounds and using it to get a free lap out of Lakitu. Of course there is one other thing that you can do with the feather, but it's even more difficult. You can do a huge power slide around the corner after the goal line, and if you jump with a feather just before you hit the wall, it's possible to make it over the lava, and you can get all the way to the other side of the track. So here's how you do it. Go all the way around and use your feather there, and it's possible to make it all the way to the other side without Lakitu's assistance, but if you at least hit the bricks on the other side, you should make it far enough to get carried over. That one's pretty difficult to do, so I highly recommend practicing your power slides before attempting that trick. And that was our fourth first place result. So now all we need to do is finish in the top four in the final match of the Mushroom Cup, and we will get the first place trophy. Of course, we're going to try to finish in first place here because that's what we do, but we don't need to. If you're going to attempt to get a fast start here, make sure to hold to the left so that you don't go flying into a wall. And we got a weapon that we can drop behind us, so you can lay a shell down by holding down whenever you press the A button. And what we want to do is try to place it right in the middle of these turbo tiles and I actually placed it a little bit too early, but if you can place it right in the middle of those and one of the enemies hits it, they won't make it across that jump and they'll have to drive all the way around, which will be a huge setback. It's also possible to get a super boost out of these turbo tiles. You just need to jump right after you hit them and make sure to let go of the B button. Although, be ready to hold the B button again as soon as you hit another object and start to slow down. I didn't really do a great job of hitting it that time, but we'll have another opportunity here. And that was much better. You can see we're just flying forward with the boost. And we also got a mushroom. If you have a mushroom, you can try to bounce off of an object, but the best thing to do with a mushroom if you're not confident in your ability to do a super boost is to just use it to cut across right here. If you want to attempt that super boost with the turbo tiles, you should definitely practice it before you try to perform it in a high pressure situation, because if you do mess it up, you might miss the jump and you'll fall to the track below and have to drive all the way around, which will be devastating. And there you have it, we've done it again, another first place finish. With five first place finishes, there's no way that we can't be in first place overall. So it'll be time to collect our trophy from the giant floating cheap cheap. Yeah, this whole ceremony is pretty weird. Each character has their own unique victory celebration, but they all revolve around doing something with this bottle of champagne. Bowser's is particularly interesting because his was changed from the Japanese version. You can see here he's just waving the bottle around in the air, but let's take a look at the original. 
Now you'll see why this one was changed. Bowser drinks the champagne. And I guess they didn't want to imply any kind of alcoholism. Although that very well could be sparkling grape juice, or maybe it's just a two liter bottle of Sprite. There was one other character whose victory celebration was changed, and that was the princess. So here's the version that we're familiar with in North America. She just throws the bottle around in the air. But let's take a look at the Japanese version. Now, if you've never seen this before, it is pretty surprising, and I'm not shocked in the slightest that they decided to change this. Maybe they just decided to change Bowser's animation at the same time, because once Princess pops that bottle, she just starts chugging it and she does not stop. Come on, Princess. Maybe save a little sprite for the rest of us? So that's one cup down and two to go. And this time we'll play as Donkey Kong because his card is essentially the same as Bowser's. We'll choose Flower Cup, and this one starts out a bit differently than the Mushroom Cup with a race around Chaco Island. Chaco Island has a bunch of small ramps in the terrain, and it's possible to do a power slide so that you hit one that's near the edge of the road and go right over the wall. So we can see it again here in slow motion. This is very difficult and very precise to do, and it doesn't give you too large of a shortcut. However, if you can find a feather in this place, and we'll just try to drop our items so that there it is, there's a feather. If you can find a feather, you can do a much easier shortcut, and it will get you much farther ahead. The spot where you want to use the feather is right after the question mark boxes, so you want to veer off to the left right here and jump over this colored wall and try to do it in a spot that puts you near the road so that you don't have to go off road for very long and you can see that that skipped the majority of that lap. If you have a mushroom, you can use it in a number of locations, but that's probably the best spot right there to just cut through that area. And over here, we got a green shell as our final item, but we're not going to need it. We are very far ahead. We're so far ahead, we're starting to lap people. And we just got ahead of Mario, who's in eighth place. And there it is, we finished the first race of the Flower Cup in first place. And if you didn't get first place, you may just want to reset. You can just start over as many times as you need to until you get first place. You can see that we finished a good six seconds ahead of the driver in second place. So Toad didn't have much of a chance in that one. The second race here in the Flower Cup is a more familiar location. This is Ghost Valley 2. Just like in the previous Ghost Valley, the item that you'd really like to find here is the feather. And it looks like we got a banana peel, but we can just drop that. And if we head over to the left, there's a second chance item box that we can find. And this one contained a green shell, which we were able to effectively use against Toad. If you take that last turn tight enough, you can go over a zip tile. And right here is where the shortcut of this Ghost Valley is. And by the shortcut, I mean the easy shortcut that you can do if you find a feather. But of course, there are some more difficult shortcuts you can attempt. And here's how it looks if you have the feather. And if you have a mushroom, it's of course possible to do it with a mushroom as well, but it's a little bit more difficult and the timing is more precise. Over here, we are pretty far out in first place right now, so we're heading around Yoshi, who is in last place, and now we're in front of him for the second time. This is our final lap, and let's see what item we got. We got a green shell, so we can use that for defense if we need it, but we're just going to try to take these turns tight so that we can hit that zip tile and cruise our way to victory. Now I said there was another way you could use a feather here in Ghost Valley 2. And of course, the thing that you can do with it is to go across the goal line, but then use the feather to jump back across the goal line to the out of bounds area on the outside of the track, and land back behind the goal line so the Lakitu carries you across for an additional lap. 
so that works in the first ghost valley, and it'll work in the second as well. And we are well on our way to getting another first place finish here in the Flower Cup, but our next challenge is the second installment of the Donut Plains. There's a big shortcut we can do here if we can find a mushroom, and up there we have it. So you just need to do a big slide here near the beginning of that lake, and I'll show it again in slow motion. Start a slide so that you're almost completely around, use your mushroom and let go of the gas, but hold down L or R so that you hop over the water and then hop over the wall. If you're able to do it properly, you'll be able to jump over that wall and skip almost an entire lap. Now we got another mushroom. If you're a little bit afraid of that, you can just try to zip over the large part of the lake. Make sure to let go of the gas when you do it so that you skip across the water. But that's a little bit safer than trying to jump over the wall. If you mess up that wall jump, you'll end up in the water. Jumping over that wall is a little bit difficult to do, but if you fall into 5th through 8th place, your chance of finding a mushroom suddenly becomes 38%. And suddenly, when you're back in 8th place, it's worth the risk, because if you make it over the wall, that could actually get you back into the race. So yeah, if you're in a bad spot, and you can kind of do a power slide, you may want to attempt this trick. Just don't forget to take your finger off the gas. And yes, I got a third mushroom. I would have been happy with one mushroom, and somehow we got three but I thought I would just try to jump over the water again, because why not? We are way, way ahead right now. If you get caught by one of those moles, just rapidly press left and right on the control pad to get rid of it. It will hamper your ability to jump, in addition to slowing you down. And we're just way ahead here, so yes, we're going to get first place again. There is one other trick you can try here if you get a mushroom. I don't think it's as good as jumping over the wall or as easy as just skipping across the water, but if you bump the wall and do a super boost by letting go of the gas and holding the L or R button, you can get enough speed to get over the water on that part of the lake as well. So that's something else you can try, but I don't think it's as good as the other two tricks that I showed here in Donut Plains too. You didn't think that we'd be able to get out of the flower cup without going back to Bowser's castle, did you? This time we're going in the opposite direction that we were before, so most of our turns are going to be to the right, but the feather is even better this time. You can see this is the more common place to use it. You want to jump near the S or the T in the word stop, because if you miss the jump, you still can get across with Lakitu's help, but if you jump over near the O or the P, there's a good chance that he'll be carrying you back to where you started from, and that will not be good. There are probably a number of places you can use the mushroom in this one, but the safest is near the goal line, so whenever you go around the last turn, that's where I would recommend using the mushroom if you have it. But if you fall into the lava and you need to get back into the race, you can use that to quickly boost your speed as well. Well, it looks like we found another feather, and there's a more difficult shortcut that we can attempt, but it will take us much farther than the other one that we did already. So we'll try this more challenging shortcut this time. To do it, we're going to go past the goal line and start a big power slide to the right, so we're going to jump and hold to the right. And we're going to use our feather right before we hit the wall, and if you do it just right, it'll carry you far enough so that even if you don't make it all the way to the other side, Lakitu will still carry you across, and you can see we skipped a huge chunk of the track by doing this. You need to be good at power sliding to do that one, but this is probably a good track to practice your power slides on anyway, because with all the 90 degree turns that you need to do, the power slides will not only get you around the turns faster, but they'll just speed you up in general. We're on the last lap and we were lucky enough to get a feather again. I'll show you what happens if you don't quite make this jump. You can see we jumped near the S in the word stop, 
and we were able to make it far enough that Lakitu picked us up and carried us the rest of the way, which isn't as good as making it all the way across, but it's still pretty good. So make sure to jump near the S or the T whenever you try to attempt that feather jump. But there is yet another feather jump that you can try here in Bowser's Castle too. Just like in many other tracks, you can slide near the goal line and jump to the out of bounds area and have Lakitu carry you for an extra lap. But it's even more forgiving here in Bowser's Castle too. You can just do a U-turn and drive towards the edge and do a feather jump out over the goal line, and that will probably count. So if you want to practice these tricks and you haven't been getting them to work, I would try to get it here in Bowser's Castle 2 first, and then try that trick elsewhere. The final track in the Flower Cup is the third installment in the Mario circuit, and this is one of the longest tracks we've been on so far. The one nice thing about the Mario Circuit tracks is that you get a good amount of traction here, so you don't really need to power slide around the turns, although I highly recommend doing a power slide around that one very tight turn in the middle. But if you're not comfortable with the slide maneuver, just try to stay on the track and if you're playing as Bowser or Donkey Kong Jr., use your speed to your advantage and you should be able to stay ahead of most of the racers and if any of them get near you, just hit them with an item or use a mushroom whenever you get to a straightaway. And there's a good spot at the bottom of the map where there's a gap in the blocks in the off-road area that you can just shoot through if you have a mushroom. Now, of course, if you're very confident with super boosts, you can try to bump a wall and let go of the gas to get a super boost as you go through that gap between the blocks but just using a mushroom to shoot through there will save you a lot of time, and make sure to hit that zip tile at the very end as you go through the goal line. To do a good slide around this middle turn, you want to jump so that you land right near the red and white stripe. So that gives you a good idea of where you need to land to make the power slide work, and we're going to be coming around to our final lap here. We're pretty far ahead, but we just got a red shell, so if any opponents get in our way, we'll blast them. It is possible for the enemy to jump over the red shell and avoid it, and sometimes Mario and Luigi will use their Starman power to get away from a red shell, but for the most part, they're going to hit their target, and nobody got in front of us, so we didn't need to use it. But if we did, the red shells are pretty good in this game. There's no blue shell in Super Mario Kart, for better or for worse. With 45 points, we've done it again. We've won the Flower Cup. And now we'll take a look at Donkey Kong Jr.'s celebration. His celebration is the same in the Japanese version. He's just going to pop the balloon like everyone else does and then he does a little juggling act, although where did the second bottle of champagne come from? Yeah, that's a little bit of magic for you. Nice one, Donkey Kong. With two cups down, that only leaves the Star Cup, and if we can get a first place finish there, we'll be able to finally unlock the Special Cup races. We'll switch back to Bowser for variety, and the beginning of the Star Cup is another new location. This is Koopa Beach 1. Koopa Beach is one of my favorite tracks. It's one of the easier ones to play on, and the key here is to try to stay in the sandy areas and stay out of the water as much as possible. You definitely want to stay out of the dark blue water because you'll sink under there and you'll move very slowly but you will also be slowed down when you're in the light blue water, although you can't avoid that entirely. If you find a feather, you can take a small shortcut by jumping over the patch of dark water near the end of the question mark boxes, but the item you really want here in Koopa Beach is a mushroom, and if you find one of those, we can do a much better shortcut. And there's one right now. So after you cross the goal line, Go down this strip of sand and start a power slide to the right, 
Then use your mushroom, let go of the gas, and hold L or R so that you skip across the water a bit. And if you sink at the end, you will need to start pressing the gas again so that you swim across and you need to make it across before Lakitu picks you up out of the water. But you can easily skip almost an entire lap by doing this trick. And it's not that hard to do. If you do get picked up by Lakitu, he'll carry you all the way back to where you started the jump. So you'll lose a lot of time if you do that. But with a little bit of practice, you should be able to nail that maneuver and get those shortcuts whenever you want them. We got our first first place finish here in the Star Cup. And now it's time for the second race. This is Chaco Island number two. This one is definitely a number two. There's a huge mud puddle on this track and it will slow you down a bit, but you just want to drive straight across. If you have a mushroom, there's a spot where you can hit a ramp with it and go flying across a wall. So you want to turn to the right here and that's the spot. Just shoot across that ramp and if you hit it just right, you can go flying across that wall for a small shortcut. But a feather is the item that you really want. If you have a feather here, you can take a huge shortcut and it's extremely easy to do. So once you get across the goal line, just head over here to the right and use your feather to jump over the colored wall and then just drive back to the track and you'll find that you're all the way back around to the goal line again. Unlike some of the other tricks in this video, that one doesn't even seem like cheating. I'd be very surprised if the developers were unaware of that one. Unfortunately, the feather is a pretty uncommon item here in Chaco Island, regardless of what place we're in. And wow, it looks like Toad just took himself out there. So yeah, we are well in the lead once again. And it would be kind of hard to mess it up at this point, although certainly possible. So we just need to stay on the road and we'll cross the goal line for another first place finish. Chaco Island 2 is a pretty easy track, especially if you can find at least one feather. But that is the last Chaco Island track in this game, so we won't be going back to that location. With 18 points in our score, the next place that we're going to is a brand new track. This is Vanilla Lake 1. It won't shock you at all to find out that the Vanilla Lake track is pretty slippery. So you want to make a few small hops as you go around the turns. You can try to power slide if you want to, but you want to be careful not to slide out of control or you may spin out. So try to just stay on the inside of the track. This is a very short track, so if you stay on the inside, you should be able to do well on this one. And watch out for those white ice blocks. Whenever you bump into them, they'll disappear, but they will slow you down the first time you hit them. We found a mushroom, so we can try to get a super boost by bouncing off of that pipe and letting go of the gas while holding the jump button, but you can only boost for so long on this track. The feather is a much better item. We can do a similar trick here than we've done on many other tracks, and whenever we get to the goal line, we're going to do a big power slide towards the outside, and then use our feather to jump across the goal line so that we land out of bounds behind it and Lakitu can carry us across the goal for a free lap. It's possible to do it without Lakitu's help, but that's a lot more difficult and it is still extremely effective even if you have to get carried across the line. With the icy vanilla lake in our rear view mirror, the next track is the complete opposite, the very warm Bowser Castle 3. This is the third and final Bowser Castle track in this game, and Bowser has really ramped it up this time with even more traps and lots of ramps to jump over the lava. The mushroom is a good item to find here. There are a lot of long straightaways on this track, Although a number of them have turbo tiles that you can use, although some of the turbo tiles are behind ramps, so you need to jump over the ramp so that you actually land on the turbo tile. 
make sure to try to grab at least one power up as you go through the ramps at the beginning. Although if you use your power up quickly enough, you may be able to get two. The Feather is once again the power up that we're hoping to see here when we're in first place on a Bowser Castle track and we'll be able to use it to do a pretty amazing shortcut right there. You see how we do it, you need to start your power slide at the end of that gray rough area and jump with your feather right before you hit the wall and if you do it you can make it all the way across and if you're a little bit short Lakitu may be able to help. Just like many of the other lava jumps, that one is very difficult to do unless you're a master of the power slide technique. We'll try to grab another question mark box here and we got a banana peel. And the thwomps at the end of this narrow hallway are very obnoxious. They can really block your progress. You may even need to slow down to get around them. Wow, we found another feather. Well, just like in the other Bowser Castle tracks, if you do a big slide at the end and cross the goal line and then use a feather to jump to the bricks on the outside, if you land behind the goal line, Lakitu will carry you across for a free lap. It's pretty awesome when you do it as the last lap. It looks very dramatic. And that's going to bring us to round five, the final race in the Star Cup. This one is going to be a lot easier than Bowser Castle 3. This is Mario Circuit 4. To be completely honest with you, Mario Circuit 4 doesn't feel a whole lot different than Mario Circuit 3. There's a good bit of traction here, so you don't have to power slide if you don't want to, but you should at least try to do a power slide around the very tight turn in the middle of the track. And if you find a mushroom, you can go off-roading at the bottom of the map right between a gap and the colored blocks. So yeah, this one is very similar to the previous Mario Circuit race. And if you use the same techniques that you used there, you will be just as successful here as you were in that one. Now it looks like we found a mushroom and we know that we can use it to go off-roading at the bottom of the map, but we're going to go for extra credit and try to bump into a wall, let go of the gas button, and hold L or R to get the super boost. And you can see our boost is still going and now we need to press the B button again to resume our normal driving, but that boost lasted pretty long. It is definitely possible to extend your boosts a lot longer than that, but just that amount of super boosting is good enough to get us ahead, although if you go off-road too much here, you can fall behind pretty quickly. If you're not comfortable with the super boost, just use your mushroom to cut across that spot in the off-road area, just like you would in Mario Circuit 3. Now we have a red shell, so if anyone gets in our way, we'll blast them. And when you want to do the big power slide in the middle, I like to start my jump right after passing those pipes. That will put you in a good position to do the slide. And then you can do a second slide there to get around towards the end. And that will bring us once more to the goal line. And this is the final lap of the Star Cup. So we're just going to try to stay on the road and we found another mushroom. That is extremely convenient. We definitely know what to do with this. So we'll do our power slide there around the big turn. And we'll come around this way and use our mushroom to cut through the off-road area. And that will bring us out right near the goal line for another first place finish. Now before we run off to the celebration, there is one more trick that we can do here in Mario Circuit 4. If you make a left at the goal line and drive right towards this blue cluster of blocks and try to jump over them, it's possible to jump in just such a way that you get to the other side and it counts as a lap, just like we did back in Donut Plains 1, but it's a lot more difficult to do here and way more difficult to do it enough times to win a race. So I don't really recommend using that trick here in the Star Cup, but it is possible. And that's it, we've done it. With a first place finish in the Mushroom, Flower, and Star Cups, we have finally unlocked the Special Cup race. So that's where we're going to go next. 
at least after we're done celebrating with this refreshing 2 liter bottle of Sprite. The sensors may not allow him to gargle it in this version, but we know that's what he really wants to be doing. And we'll load up the game one more time. We'll switch back over to Donkey Kong Jr. for the final set of tracks. And you can see now that the special cup race is unlocked. Let's do this. The special cup starts out with Donut Plains 3, which is one of the more difficult tracks in the game. So it's nice that they at least put it first. So if you do poorly on it, you can just reset and try again. It's especially difficult in a 150 CC class. The roads are slick and narrow, there are tons of Monty moles to avoid, and you can definitely get knocked into the water when you're going across those bridges. So do your best to stay on the road and make sure that you grab a power up every time you go around. If you can find a mushroom, there's a difficult to perform shortcut that you can do, but it's a very powerful one, so it may be worth a try, especially if you've fallen way behind. As we come around here, we're going to slide around to the bridge and see what power up we get. It's just the coins. We already had over 10 coins, so they're not super useful, but if we did lose some coins, we would rather not drop below 10. It's also very important that you never have zero coins because if you just get nudged by another cart when you have zero coins, you will spin out. And there's the mushroom we were looking for, and here's where you can jump over the wall. So let's look at that again in slow motion. After the broken bridge, start a slide towards the water, press A to use the mushroom, let go of B, and hold L or R to hop over the water, and hopefully hop over the wall. If you can master that shortcut, you'll skip a huge portion of that lap, and it will get you way ahead, even if you were pretty far behind. And once we go around this turn, we'll cross the goal line for a first place finish. And that is not a bad start to our chase of the special cup. Luckily, Donut Plains 3 is the last Donut Plains in the game, and the next race is going to be a much easier one. We'll take the nine points that we got here in the first round, and head over to Koopa Beach number two. This second Koopa Beach is very similar to the first one, except this time instead of being on a bunch of small islands surrounding the water, we're on one large island surrounded by water. The mushroom is a decent item to find here because we can use it to go through the watery parts, and just like in the first Koopa Beach, you want to do your best to stay on the sand as much as possible. So we can use the mushroom right here to cut through that watery area, and then we'll try to stay on the beach as we drive around. This time though, if you find a feather, a feather is much more useful, and well, there's a feather right there. Whenever you get into the water, you can head over to the left and jump over the colored wall at the end for a shortcut. And that's a very easy shortcut to do, probably the easiest shortcut here in the Special Cup, so you'll want to take advantage of that whenever you have the opportunity. This track is relatively short, doesn't have a lot of obstacles, and has a viable shortcut, so you should expect to finish in first place here. If you are doing poorly, you may want to pause the game and give up. You'll use one of your lives and you'll go back to 8th place to start the race, but when you start in 8th place, you do start with more coins, so it's not as big of a disadvantage as you may think. You would rather get a better finish than save all of your lives. Before we leave Koopa Beach 2, this is another one of those tracks where you can slam into the wall and get it to count for laps. This time you want to slam right into the middle of the green blocks, so the very center of those, and remember, you're trying to jump before you hit the wall so that you actually elevate over the middle of it, and that's what's going to get it to count for laps. This is one of the easier places to do this trick, so if you want to practice it, I would try it here first. 
although it's still difficult to do it well enough to get enough laps to win the race. But if you're pretty good, it can be done. It's very frustrating when it's not working though. Sometimes it just seems like it should be working and it isn't. And we're on the final lap, so we are doing pretty well here and that's it. We finished Koopa Beach 2 without going around at all. And let's see what our lap times look like. Yeah, the best one was 7 seconds. Nice. That only leaves 3 tracks left in the game. And the next one is the final iteration of a favorite. Ghost Valley number 3. Just like in the other Ghost Valley tracks, there's a lot of tight turns here, so you want to use your power slides. But watch out for the walls. Whenever you hit them, they'll disappear, and then they won't be there for later laps. We found a feather, and a feather is probably the best item to find here in Ghost Valley 3. The best way to use the feather is the best way to use it in all of the Ghost Valley tracks. To try to leap out of bounds from the front side of the goal line so that you land behind the goal line and get carried across by Lakitu for a free lap. So if you find a feather, you may want to try that trick, but there are some other things you could do with a feather if you get one. If you aren't finding feathers, just try to stay on the track, and there is a zip tile that you can hit towards the end for a boost of speed. And we'll try to do a power slide around that turn after the goal line. We found another feather, so there are a couple ways you can use this feather. The most practical way we've already seen, where you jump off the edge, but if that's a little bit too difficult for you to do, the easy way to use a feather here is to use it right after the question mark boxes to jump to the right. That's a very easy jump to make. And even if you aren't super good with the feathers or with power sliding or any of that, you should be able to make that jump and it will get you ahead a place or two. Before we go on, there is one other trick you can do if you find a feather here in Ghost Valley 3. So there's a frayed bit of wood in the middle of the track and if you do a big power slide towards that frayed edge, it's right over here. So there's the spot. Do a big slide towards that frayed edge of wood and then jump over with a feather. And if you make it far enough, you'll be carried to the other side, which is right near the goal line. It's a very big skip, but it's kind of difficult to do. If you don't make it far enough, Lakitu will carry you back to where you started from and you'll lose a lot of time. Round four of the Special Cup brings us back to another location that we've only been to once. This is Vanilla Lake 2. Vanilla Lake 2 has a lot of open water in the middle of it, which gives us a lot of opportunities for tricks. We're looking for a feather or a mushroom, and either one of them will be good for making shortcuts. You want to try to stay towards the inside of this track, you can jump over the water, but if you stay towards the inside, you'll avoid most of those ice blocks, which are very annoying. And here's the feather. The feather is the more powerful of the two items here, because we can do the same trick that we've done on a lot of different tracks here, and that's to use the feather to jump over the goal line to an out of bounds area behind the goal, and let Lakitu carry us across for a free lap. I feel like I've said that about a million times now. The tricks you can do with the mushroom are a lot more interesting. You can use it to shoot across some of the watery areas. Remember to take your finger off of the B button after you use the mushroom so that you can use the super boost technique. If you're afraid to go through the deepest parts of the water, you can just try to use a mushroom towards the end right here. That'll skip you across a nice portion of the lake and get you right to the goal line. And that's going to bring us to the final race of the game. Hopefully you did pretty good in the first four rounds of the Special Cup, because the final round is Rainbow Road. Try not to be too intimidated by Rainbow Road. In a lot of ways, it's just like another Bowser Castle track, 
it just doesn't have walls on the edges, so you need to be a little bit more conservative here and try to stay on the road. The track itself doesn't have a ton of turns and actually has a decent number of straightaways. This turn right here in the middle is the tightest one, so if you have to lit off the gas a little bit to get around that turn, that's totally okay. If you're more confident and want to attempt a power slide there, that's even better. If you have a mushroom, the longest straightaway is the one near the goal line, so I would recommend using it there. You need to be careful with mushrooms here in Rainbow Road. If you use them at the wrong time, it could shoot you off the edge of the track. If you're struggling with Rainbow Road, what if I told you that the same goal line lap skipping trick that worked on so many other tracks will work here as well? That's right. If you can get a slide going at the goal line that crosses the goal, and then use your feather to jump out of bounds and land somewhere outside of the track behind the goal, Lakitu can carry you across the line for a free lap. That trick will even work here on the final race of the game. If you find a feather and you're not comfortable doing that lap skipping trick, you can use the feather to jump over the thwomps. The thwomps in this area are electrified, so if you touch them, you'll spin out and lose four coins. Luckily, there's always a safe path that goes around them. So if you don't really need the feather to get around thwomps, and you're not going to use it to do the lap skipping trick, then the only real other thing to do with it here is to use it to cut a corner. So you can just jump around a corner a little bit more sharply than you normally would be able to. And that's not as bad as it may seem, but certainly not as good as skipping an entire lap. And that's it. We've done it. We've beaten Super Mario Kart. All we can do now is sit back, relax, and enjoy the cheesy ending. The Special Cup is by far the most difficult set of races in the game, and ending on Rainbow Road established a tradition that is still followed in Mario Kart games today. The trophy ceremony is mostly the same here for the Special Cup, except for this time it says you're a Super Mario Kart expert, and after we press the button, it's going to move on to a full credit sequence, so there is a real ending to this game. Before we go on to that though, this also unlocks the 150cc class, which is the game's most challenging mode. The enemies are way more aggressive here, and it is a lot less forgiving, but one nice thing is that if you want to, you can choose the special cup right away. You don't have to beat the other three cups this time. The only real difference to the ending is that the cups look a little bit different. So if we beat Rainbow Road here, we'll be able to see what the trophy ceremony looks like on 150cc. But we're going to get the exact same credits roll, and I don't think it unlocks anything special this time. So if you're able to beat 150cc, then you are very good at this game. It is way harder than 100cc, but a lot of the same tricks are going to work, and if you're a master of all of those shortcuts, well, they work here in 150cc too, so those shortcuts can definitely get you ahead, especially the ones where you jump out of bounds and you get the free laps. And here is the ending. Roll the credits. Just like anyone else who had a Super Nintendo in the 1990s, I played a lot of Super Mario Kart, and I was still surprised by how many different tricks that I didn't know about when I started researching this video. Some of the tricks were very difficult to perform, and it was hard to capture gameplay footage where I would get all of the random items that I needed, and then actually hit the trick on top of it. So this was a tough video to put together, but it was a lot of fun unlocking all of the secrets to a game that decades ago I thought I was an expert at. 
if you want to really be a Super Mario Kart expert, there's a whole nother level of tricks to this game where you need to use a worn or modified controller, but I felt like that was beyond the scope of this video. The tricks that I show here are difficult enough. So I have a newfound respect for the real Super Mario Kart pros, but if you just want to be able to beat your friends or defeat the computer, the tricks that you find in this video should serve you well. So I hope this video was able to help you finally beat Super Mario Kart and put Rainbow Road in your rear view mirror. If it did, make sure to give it a like and make sure to subscribe for more videos because there will always be more wild races to win. And that's why we'll be back again next week with another video game you can beat. Thanks for watching.